with in electrical power systems from the same college to date sir has worked as design engineer in tata technologies project support engineer again at tata motors followed by bagging position of senior manager in his work tenure in the same institution he had also served as senior engineer at fev india currently he is working as assistant consultant in tcs pune vivid skill set and capabilities of sir reflects from his technical expertise in handling so in handling of softwares like matlab tatia r20 autocad just to name a few sir's indispensable contribution intellectually is reflected from his publications in ieee and siats conference based on rectification topologies and low cost electric vehicle platform for three uh, wheeler electrification development without further ado i would like to call sir to put light on his today's topic so over to you sir yeah good afternoon to all and uh, thank you for nice introduction and uh, hello to every uh, one and all and thank you all the organizations for inviting me and giving this opportunity to express my views on connected and electric vehicles which is a uh, upcoming trend in automobile industry uh, on uh, today's session yeah so let me share my screen Are you able to see my screen? Just a minute, sir. if uh, there is a lag in uh, lag in uh, okay if there is a lag in my video or uh, my presentation i will turn my camera off so that we can get uh, better bandwidth uh, is it visible now hello am i audible Yes, sir. You are audible. Okay. Is is my screen uh, is my screen visible to you? Yes, sir. It's visible. Okay. Okay. So that I can continue. Okay. So uh, I was already uh, I'm already uh, introduced to you people by Saurabh. Uh, so. My name is uh, Mohan Joshi, and I am working in the field of uh, electric vehicles from last uh, ten years. Uh, so today I am here to uh, present my thoughts, share my some views regarding electric mobility and connected electric mobility. So uh, starting, so this will be our flow for today. so what is uh, electric mobility then what is the connected electric mobility then how the things are connected and where the things are connected uh, what are the benefits of of being connected and what are the challenges and what are the future future trends and again we will conclude this session okay <clears throat> so before we start so i would request all the uh, non speaking members to be on mute Uh, so that there will be no disturbance to other members okay uh, and if you have in, in between if you have any queries or questions you can put it in the comment box chat box so that we can uh, address it at the end of the session okay so uh, so what is uh, electric mobility so electric mobility is uh, by as it name suggests the mobility with the help of electricity so electricity cannot be taken directly from the transmission lines or it has to be stored somewhere in the in the vehicle or on board so uh, these are stored in battery 
so electric vehicles are the locomotives which use electrical energy stored in batteries uh, they may be it may be a partially used or a fully used uh, that uh, which uh, this uh, energy will be used for traction so uh, uh, you may be knowing this terminology like uh, they they are used they are called as x evs so x can be anything between h h for hybrid vehicle ph for phev for plug in hybrid vehicles uh, bev as battery electric vehicles then fuel cell uh, electric vehicles respectively <clears throat> so uh, each has its own advantages and disadvantages uh, so these are various degrees of hybridization so battery electric vehicle uh, So, uh, so battery electric vehicles are the purest form of uh, electric vehicle. I, uh, in the sense, they use hundred percent electrical energy for uh, its traction, uh, while hybrid and plug-in hybrid vehicles use uh, partial electric electric vehicles. So, in hybrid and plug-in hybrid vehicles, it is assisted by engines, the the, the petrol or diesel engines. So, uh, they use partial electric uh, uh, partial electricity and in battery electric vehicles the complete energy is uh, obtained from uh, obtained from uh, stored stored energy from battery then uh, till few uh, till last few years we, we were saying that electric mobility is future but now we can say so it's not in future anymore it's in present so you can see lot of uh, lot of uh, electric uh, buses electric bikes electric cars uh, moving around you or, or nearby you uh, so you maybe if you are following the news trends and some uh, news related to petrol prices so it's a huge price hikes these days so more and more people are moving towards electric mobility through electric bikes or electric cars while all uh, majority of the uh, municipal corporations like big cities municipal corporations have set their agenda to go uh, gasoline free or diesel free mobility uh, they they are they have already started to introduce uh, electric uh, vehicles or electric buses for the mass transportation in the cities so uh, when we say electric mobility, it's not only automobile industry. So uh, various industries like uh, automobile industry or banking in the banking, banking is for billing of the charging of the vehicles. Then energy and power generation or the synchronization between power plants. So all these things are required. Then IT connectivity and data security. And Lot, lot of uh, industries are directly or indirectly associated with uh, this electric mobility field. Okay, so uh, what are the benefits uh, of electric mobility? Why we are uh, we are this, uh, till till last few years we were using uh, petrol engines or diesel engines. So why we have decided to move to electric uh, things or electric cars? So reasons, uh, there are multiple reasons. Uh, first, first and foremost is uh, related to our cost. The direct cost is uh, uh, fuel cost, and indirect cost uh, are the maintenance cost. Also, we are getting some subsidies from government uh, in the in the cost or import duty or GST. So these these also contribute to the direct cost cutting or direct cost saving uh, from uh, electric vehicles. So indirect cost is a maintenance. So uh, if you, if I would ask you uh, what is the frequency that you maintain your vehicle or petrol or diesel vehicle, so you would say th once in a three months or once in a six months. So it, uh, electric vehicles uh, require very less maintenance and uh, because of the reduced uh, number of parts. So 
uh, it is uh, elect any any typical uh, electric vehicle is having uh, almost one fourth of the number of parts that of that are used in uh, conventional in a petrol or diesel vehicle so in direct uh, as a result so maintenance is also reduced so emissions are also uh, this uh, co carbon carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide so these emissions are also reduced nitrogen oxides or sulfur oxides so these are also directly uh, reduced with the help of electric mobility so some some of you may ask that uh, uh, now the majority of majority of uh, energy is being produced with the help of uh, coal in the thermal power stations so that is a uh, again uh, point of debate that uh, how these emissions would uh, come down and uh, our scientists are working uh, like uh, how how this uh, energy can be made available with the non conventional source of energy so uh, this emissions are coming down uh, i am saying that uh, with the uh, with the sorry. so these these emissions are coming down so these are i'm i'm talking about the residential or operational areas uh, then again pollution uh, free so air pollution is uh, uh, as we discussed air pollution will be dis uh, decreased i would i would not say it will be zero but uh, surely it will be decreased and noise pollution is almost uh, zero with uh, electric uh, electric vehicles then it is having long life due to less moving parts like engine and uh, it is having a, just a motor and converters like the differential also then higher efficiency of drives if you see the efficiency of uh, diesel engines or petrol engines so they are operating at uh, almost 40 to 50 percent uh, or even at 30 35 percent of the their operating range so uh, if you see the drives operation of uh, electric cars so it is going around 60 more than more than 70 75 percent or 80 percent of the their uh, operating range so higher efficiency is an uh, reduction of losses so this is the uh, main advantage of having electric vehicles so another part is the less dependency of fossil fuels so why uh, after impl implementation of uh, electric uh, vehicles in our on our roads or in indian markets so we will save a lot in foreign currency from the import bill of the gasoline or uh, crude oil so that is another benefit okay so when we talk about the electric vehicle so i would like to uh, just in in brief uh, it can be uh, said that the major components of the electric vehicles are the energy storage systems uh, obviously to store the drive energy to, and to provide the energy for the traction of a vehicle then energy converters like to convert electrical energy into mechanical and from uh, while braking that the vehicle kinetic energy back into the it can be used back for the charging of the battery so it's a to and fro motion of the energy uh, or the to and fro flow of the energy uh, so that uh, that is made uh, possible with the help of motor then power electronics to uh, to adjust or to control the currents and voltages from uh, for motor uh, optimization motor performance optimization that is uh, mostly if uh, you are using the ac motor or ac uh, sorry, ac motor then we called as power distribution unit so it controls the flow of uh, uh, where should, where from uh, the like from battery to motor or motor so this power distribution is much but set of uh, relays and controllers so this decide from uh, from which part which part the energy to be flown then comes the 
the control part control electronics so to operate the electric motor or or simultaneous operation of engine and motor in case of hybrid uh, electric vehicle like uh, you have to control the torque of the motor or you have to so that is possible with the help of controller that is a part of control electronics the charger so charger is obviously like our mobile charger uh, it is used for charging the batteries in hybrid and uh, uh, hybrid and electric uh, vehicles in not only hybrid plug in hybrids also in the electric vehicles most important part of the sensors it senses the parameters from the vehicle and uh, it uh, tells the controller that what is the current scenario or current situation of the particular parameters of the vehicle so based on the sensor inputs uh, controller decides what to do next okay so this is about uh, electric mobility now going one step ahead what is the connected electric mobility so uh, when the electric vehicles are connected to each other or any other uh, other member of the ecosystem and to other uh, electric vehicles that is the self driven vehicle is connected to each other and to other members of ecosystem through wireless network it forms a this connected mobility system so just like we have a social media group like whatsapp group or facebook group or insta groups so if you are something plan a trip or plan a event so each each member uh, would uh, complete his task and post is its status that i have completed this thing i have completed so uh, just like these things so each member or each member of the system will uh, will uh, do its task and re continuously reporting uh, it will be continuously reporting its status and uh, what you can say information on the server like uh, i am i am holding at this station or i am going i am going to this direction or continuously it is synced with the uh, uh, server so that other members of the system will let will get to know that uh, what is the current scenario or what i should do accordingly so this is uh, the connected electric mobility so how how the things are connected so car is connected to multiple members at a time it is not that uh, uh, is connected uh, one time and after that connection is uh, finished uh, connect to other members so it is not like that at a time it is connected to multiple things just for the hotspot so multiple machines or multiple devices connected to a single uh, router or hot machine so like uh, this things basically is connected to multiple things at a time so it is called as a vehicle to anything it is it can be categorized from vehicle to vehicle like two vehicles or multiple vehicles so like if you can see uh, multiple vehicles are uh, crossing here so the, uh, this is the vehicle this is the vehicle this is another vehicle this is another vehicle waiting for this so uh, multiple vehicles are uh, communicating to each other at the time then vehicle to infrastructure so infrastructure can be this like or this uh, the members which are working into this or the hospitals or schools or any uh, military zone so this is called as a, uh, or bus stops or any other things which are uh, categorized under which comes under infrastructure so this vehicle also communicates with the infrastructure items or infrastructure uh, components then vehicle to pedestrians so will take this pedestrian crossing here in the right picture this this person this person is crossing the crossing the road and the vehicle has detected 
this uh, person has passed from the zebra crossing and i'm ready to go so such kind of intelligence will be provided in the car so that is the vehicle to pedestrians then vehicle to cloud also this uh, all for uh, all the parameters of the vehicle like my position my speed or my destination my temperature my user uh, mr driver or number of passengers so all these things is uh, getting uh, continuously synced with the cloud so this is called as a b2c and uh, so on it's multiple agencies or even b2h is also there vehicle to home so uh, if uh, you are having uh, multi uh, excess uh, excess charge in the vehicle you can feed that energy to your home also to run your home applications so this is called b2h so vehicle to uh, vehicle to home so this communication is only direction that uh, it offers a 360 degree coverage like our wi-fi or hotspot so i have taken this uh, image to uh, to for better understanding and clarity so uh, like you can say that uh, the car is uh, communicating with a v2x like vehicle to anything vehicle to network vehicle to infrastructure vehicle to pedestrian vehicle to vehicle vehicle to home so multiple uh, agencies are connected to vehicles then telematics wife or your cloud or your cellular networks then gps and data so uh, another thing is if you are stuck with uh, uh, if you are car is having any problem then uh, you need not to call any person or something so you just uh, have to dial uh, their customer number or something so they will uh, update your uh, or they will uh, uh, they will check your vehicle they can check your vehicle uh, from their lab or their customer care service center and they will just update your software or clear the bug from their end or just with the help of laptop Uh, or their system uh, this is uh, this can be done with the help of cloud again uh, if your uh, battery uh, if your car battery soc that is a state of charge or you know, how uh, how much charge you have left in your car so that is depleting suppose it is 80% 70% 50% 25% 15% so now the vehicle understands that uh, my vehicle uh, the charge charge left in the vehicle is not sufficient to reach a destination so uh, it will what it will, it will do it will find some nearest uh, charging station and it will automatically book some slot for for itself and particular in particular time uh, it will drive it, uh, you drive you there you have to just uh, plug the plug the car, plug the uh, what you can say a plug of the charging plug for the charging to the wake to the vehicle or if it is the uh, inductive charging and you have to just park the vehicle just above the charging plate and then uh, your vehicle will get automatically charged then infotainment so the infotainment is uh, is is your in in vehicle part so it's a uh, audio or display Uh, digital cockpit wifi inside the vehicle seat enter is uh, seat seat position or entertainment so these are the in in vehicle components for uh, connected vehicles this is also a part of connected vehicle but this is inside the vehicle you have seen what is the uh, what what is a connected vehicle or what are uh, connected how how they are connected so what are the benefits of being connected so first and foremost part is safety so remove of, uh, of human errors so it will result in the traffic reduction of the uh, number of accidents crashes most of the accidents happen due to negligence of driver and uh, wrong judgment so since this is all controlled by uh, machine or sensor so it will be a drastic uh, this uh, cases or this uh, accidents number of accidents will be drastically reduced then uh, high transportation efficiency so uh, 
I'm not saying here electrical efficiency. It's a transportation efficiency. That is the road of use. Uh, sorry, uh, the road for use. Availability of road for use. So uh, by this mean, I uh, I, I mean uh, the availability of road for use. So uh, if uh, if the car is connected to the server uh, and then the car will get get to know that uh, the road which uh, it is following that it is having some condition at some distance so uh, it will alert the driver and ask him uh, ask his opinion that uh, what what it should do so if the uh, driver says that uh, yes okay choose the less less traffic or less congested uh, route then it will reroute its uh, its uh, preferred route and uh, and uh, diverge from the alternate paths so uh, this is one of the case uh, case uh, you can say another thing is uh, uh, the time management is also improved with the help of uh, this connect connectivity then lower cost of operation uh, the cost of uh, uh, operation means uh, uh, the the traffic uh, traffic policemen or any maintenance people so this uh, cost of operation is reduced with the help of connectivity uh, faster cleaner and quieter operation uh, resulting in environment conservation at least in the operation areas as uh, i said in the previous slide so it is a point of doubt that uh, it's a point of debate uh, that how cleaner are the electric vehicles but at least in the operation areas the the concentration of air pollution or sound pollution will also uh, be uh, reduced so auto adjustments of the driving pattern in various zones like so if uh, like uh, i said in the previous slides uh, so if uh, the vehicle is continuously communicating with the infrastructures like schools or hospitals so uh, when it reaches near the school or near the school zone so it uh, it all uh, automatically detects that the uh, school zone is uh, yes, we are in the school zone so the horns will be reduced means horns will be dis disabled and the speed is all or uh, is automatically uh, speed limit is set within the prescribed limits so uh, like this uh, you need not to be you, you need not to worry about the setting uh, speed limits or something so it will be automatically taken care uh, then saving of uh, precious times like finding the parking slot or booking slot for charging stations so uh, we will save a lot of uh, time uh, so customer delight so whenever uh, suppose a car is uh, used by three members or four members in a family so each is each person is having its own preference uh, one uh, means a man in the family is uh, tall enough to uh, tall enough and uh, the lady in, in the same family or the second user is uh, short then uh, each time it has to adjust the seat, adjust the seat position so it has uh, uh, just when you uh, when, uh, any user sits on the driver seat so it will recognize your face and accordingly it will do other uh, seat seating position adjustments or lighting mood so these things are automatically uh, automatically adjusted also if you are if you are traveling daily from your home to office then you can set that you as your preferred route so if another person is uh, using the car then he can set his own preferred Route. So, uh, like these things, uh, you need not to worry about. Uh, uh, is the things are getting simpler. Then, uh, as I said, over the air updates, uh, OTA. Uh, you need not to send your uh, vehicle for upgradation or something. So, it will be done automatically when you are driving at any at any look. So that software will be updated automatically. Then quicker roadside assistance. Yeah, like uh, you need not to wait for 
the person or vehicle towing went to come and uh, this person to come so roadside assistance will be uh, provided uh, within a minute uh, like uh, when we are, uh, we are we are merging from uh, one lane to another lane or one uh, what you can say uh, your city city roads to main national highway so when you can uh, you have to reduce the speeds you have to see for the vehicles and uh, another vehicles running and then uh, you have to cross the uh, cross the road or to, you have to merge on the highways so if uh, you are the vehicle knows it already that who is coming and who is going then uh, he, uh, the car will adjust itself so that uh, it will travel with high speeds so what are the challenges what are the challenges uh, in this uh, field like uh, cyber security is the most uh, uh, important thing like authentication and integration integrity of the data so uh, like uh, vehicle, those two vehicles are connecting uh, it's communicating with each other and suppose uh, person uh, who is hacker and he hacks the data of, from the both the vehicles and he can download the data for, stored in the vehicle uh, so that he will get all the stored information about the owner his bank details and all these things so that things can happen so the cyber security is uh, very very important then infrastructure development like uh, i said uh, like vehicle will come vehicle will communicate with the infrastructure also pedestrians other vehicles so charging stations cloud so this infrastructure is also uh, required to be built then uh, faster data processing units are required like uh, suppose two vehicles are communicating and one vehicle will send a handshake signal to another vehicle and another vehicle should uh, recognize that signal authenticate whether it has come from the reliable source or not and uh, it should decide it should take decision from uh, with, uh, whether it is right to approve or not and it should also send the uh, acknowledgement signal so this whole process should uh, should happen within fraction of seconds so that uh, the devices which are able to uh, do the processing or data communication with such a high speed are also required then functional safety uh, of the software application so what do you mean by functional safety that if uh, suppose particular device is programmed for particular performing particular task then that function or that software should not fail uh, due to some bug or some uh, wrong input so that will that will again collapse all the system and that will result in some other the, some other type of accident or some other type type of failure so that should not happen accuracy of sensor since we are more or uh, less re uh, relying on the sensors so accuracy of sensors is uh, also very great importance then accuracy of the systems like gps or lidar so uh, these systems accuracy is also very important then last but not the least is the uninterrupted power supply each each uh, unit or each uh, uh, equipment should be uh, having some uh, backup backup power supply so that is also important <clears throat> so uh, it's uh, not too far for india to be into the connected mobility or connected vehicles so uh, lower degree autonomous cars are already on the indian roads like a uh, few of the oems have already launched uh, these vehicles with lo lo lesser degree autonomous it, it is not fully driverless cars but uh, lower degree autonomous cars like uh, the parking assistance or the voice control or so, so such kind of uh, autonomous cars are already on the indian roads like so mg hector or kia like seltos hyundai avenue so these uh, these cars are already on roads and uh, huge uh, literally huge uh, 
uh, innovation or uh, some projects are going on in in many OEMs or many manufacturers. Uh, so many smarter vehicles are expected to be on roads uh, in the coming years. So uh, what are the degree of automation? So low low degree uh, low degree devices is just uh, like a parking assistant. So you see, it's a uh, assistance to driver <clears throat> like camera or sensors so this is a low degree of uh, uh, automation uh, then partial uh, automation is steering control so without uh, means if the vehicle is uh, uh, going into unsafe conditions so system will take control from the driver and it will it will take its own decisions and uh, will save the situation so steering control or lane det detection. So this is the uh, partial uh, degree of automation. <clears throat> then conditional, like uh, accident is uh, uh, or collision situation is there. Uh, so uh, the, the vehicle will take control from driver and uh, will take some decisions to avoid the collision. So this is the conditional uh, conditional part. Then high degree of automation with uh, self-driving self -driving mode in certain areas like uh, away from the cities, uh, low traffic areas where the traffic is uh, very less or you the less effort is required uh, for a certain duration say five minutes or seven minutes so that driver can relax. So this is the kind of uh, high, high degree of automation. Then full uh, in the full degree, uh, the driver is uh, not required. Driver intervention is not required. So the vehicle is completely self-driven. So uh, this is all about the uh, this is all about the connected vehicles and connected and electric vehicles. So if you have any queries, uh, please uh, let me know. I have read the comment uh, this box, so there are no questions. Okay. Are there any questions from audience? You can ask them in the chat box. I'll read it out for sir. I'll wait for a minute. If you have any doubts, you can ask. Yeah, yeah. This is a very vast area, and uh, there is a huge scope for uh, you members. Even the participants uh, can unmute themselves and ask the questions if they want. Yeah. There are very multiple topics you can grab from this area for your projects, B projects or uh, engineering projects. A lot of uh, areas are there. <laughs> Feedback forms will be shared on the groups of your WhatsApp. So um, please make sure that you fill them on time. Okay. So I would like to thank you, sir, for this insightful session. This session has certainly proven to add knowledge in the repository of our facts. Uh, now it brings us to the end of today's session. And it brings me immense pleasure to extend vote of thanks on behalf of um, uh, EFFECT committee to all the panelists, keynote speakers, participants, and my fellow teammates for making this event fantabulously successful. I am pretty sure that the valuable guidance of our panelists today will not only prove to be beneficial for our participants, but would also have guided a lot to our audience too. Eminent presence of our keynote speakers for today eh, have also added feather to the crown of our pursuit. The valuable add-on provided by our emeritus speakers has created a wonderful takeaway for everyone present irrespective of them being audience or participants. I would like to thank all participants for participating in our conference today. Last but not the least, I would like to extend vote of thanks to all the audience for their patient listening, as well as my peers from the EFFECT committee for making this event huge success on the day one of our platform. Looking forward to see you all tomorrow for our rounds based on smart grid, renewable energy and power system protection. Thank you all. Thank you and best of luck. Yeah. Thank you.
Thank you all for your participation today. You may leave. Thank you. You may disperse.